boy, this didn't age well. So as I'm sure most of you know by now, our boy Dan Tictum has just signed with the Williams Formula 1 team as a development driver, and as well as this, he's also announced that he'll be driving in Formula 2 with Dams alongside the fastest slow driver on that grid, Sean Galile. This is all part of Tictum's Formula 1 or bust goal that he set for himself, and, and hey, that's, that's admirable, but nothing is guaranteed in this game, and with how Williams have been lately, his patience will be tested, and historically speaking, he's had trouble with that, to put it diplomatically. But anyway, let's have a look at all of this. Let's first reflect on what happened that led up to this. So, if you want full clarification on Dan Tictum's career up to this point, it's pretty well explained in the WTF Happens 2 video that I posted up there, which for some reason got some traction a couple days ago. But yeah, from there, let's have a look into what happened with Tictum. So after Tictum was dropped by the Red Bull program after three rounds in the Super Formula Series in Japan, his career kind of went into limbo for a few months. It was until Delara asked him to shake down the new 320F3 car. After that came some appearances in the Formula Regional European Championship, where he performed pretty well. Then, of course, he made his return at Macau, where he was pretty speedy, but he also did some really dumb stuff too. A little while after the weekend, he announced he'll be driving with Dams, and more recently, he joined Williams as the development driver. Right, so, his inclusion into the Williams Grand Prix team as a development driver. First off, well done, Dan. I hope all goes well with this program. But it should be pointed out that being a development driver is not the same as being a test driver. See, what Tictum is a part of is essentially the same as what he was with Red Bull. Although, exactly how much funding he's going to get in Williams versus that of Red Bull, I'm not so sure. And how long he'll last there, that's a bit of a grey area too. Because, with all due respect, development drivers, especially with Williams, are a dime a dozen. Nevertheless, he should be able to grow with this team in the time while he's there, so, hey, you gotta give him that. And at this point, I think I should clarify, I don't hate this guy. I think this guy is gifted behind the wheel. I do think he's F1 worthy, but he is the most frustrating driver in the world in the sense that he seems to be his own worst enemy at times. And really, if we want to delve into it, it's the reason why he's wildly unpopular with the motor racing fan base. So yeah, the development program has come in real handy for the F2 season ahead. He is with the Dams team, which took out the F2 Teams Championship this year with Seta Kamara and Latifi, and he'll have a nice lapdog for a teammate, seeing as how Sean Galal has failed to make an impact on the F2 scene despite living in it for the past five years, but the grid is shaping up to be one of the most talented in years. There will be some heavy hitters in other academies such as Marcus Armstrong, Robert Schwartzman and Mick Schumacher who will be gunning for the title. The likes of Louis Delatraz and Callum Eilert are certainly not going to be worth dismissing, and the experience of Artem Markaloff will also add to the field. So whilst Dams will provide him with arguably the best platform to launch a campaign for the title in 2020, being with a top flight team is not going to guarantee him anything in this championship. And just as fast as he came back from adversity when he was dropped by Red Bull, it could easily go just as wrong just as fast. But until that green flag drops in Bahrain on the 21st of March, we're not going to know any of this. So I'll conclude by saying, Dan, if you're watching this, which I'm sure you're not, best of luck, and I do mean it. And to everyone watching, let's give this kid a shot. Yeah, he's done some dumb shit in the past, but there isn't much he can do about it. The objective should be forward thinking. Clean slate, new year, give him a shot next year. If he screws it up for himself, Sure, down the two. But we all want the best drivers on the grid, preferably with a little bit of charisma about them. So let's see what happens with this guy. Now I know I said let's give him a shot, but how do we think he'll do this year? Comment below, like, everything. You know how this works. I'll catch you all later. Beep.